See, insects are limited today on how big they can get based upon the fact that they don't have enough air to breathe. They breathe through their skin. Insects that grow in oxygen-rich waters grow a thousand times heavier than their counterparts just because they can grow bigger and they have more oxygen. See, insects breathe through their skin. If an animal increases in size, its surface area to volume ratio drops off. As an animal gets smaller in size, the surface area compared to the volume increases. So insects that breathe through their skin simply can't get huge today. And yet fossil insects are found that are huge, like this dragonfly with a 50-inch wingspan. How'd you like to run into that at 70 miles an hour? You take the bug deflector and the windshield right off, right? You guys have cockroaches here in Wisconsin? You should come to Florida and see ours. We raised some in our museum. If you want to come down to our science center, hold one of our Madagascar hissing cockroaches, they get pretty good size. But did you know fossil cockroaches have been found that are 18 inches long? You didn't call Orkin in those days, you called the National Guard. <laughs> fossil centipede was found in Germany eight and one half feet long. That's a big centipede. Fossil grasshoppers have been found two feet long. You could eat them puppies. <laughs> Fossil tarantula, three foot leg span. Fossil cattails have been found 60 feet tall. Fossil donkey found in Texas, nine feet high at the shoulder. Everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> Fossil buffalo horns have been found, indicating buffalo used to get huge. Show me home where that buffalo roams. I'll show you a wreck. Deer antlers, 12 foot span. Some of you hunters are thinking, wow. <laughs> How many folks here go try to shoot Bambi's daddy? Come on now, let me see. There we go. And eat them too. Amen. All right, good. <laughs> Kangaroo fossils have been found that are 10 feet tall. Wombats, the size of a mini little car. They found in a prehistoric goose stood as tall as an elephant and weighed half a ton. That's a big goose. Fossil beavers have been found eight feet long. Right here in, in Wisconsin, a guy found the beaver jaw uh, over in Johnson Creek, Wisconsin. I met the guy, there's his phone number, Jim Herb. He said, yeah, that beaver would have been seven or eight feet long. That's a big beaver. In Ohio, a six-foot beaver skeleton was found. I think before the flood, the trees were bigger, which means you need bigger beavers to chew them down. <laughs> Probably just about everything was bigger back in those days. Salamanders got six feet long. Greater air pressure from the canopy would also increase the amount of oxygen getting into the water, which means now more fish can survive because fish have to breathe air underwater through their gills. Well, increasing air pressure diffuses more gas into the water. A shark here, I'm holding a shark's jaw that I got in Hawaii. That shark was probably about 12 feet long. If a tooth of a shark is one inch long, the shark was about 15 feet. It's kind of a rough average, depending on species, of course. I've got a replica here on the table of a fossil shark's tooth, indicating sharks before the flood probably got 80 feet long. Now, the movie Jaws had a 25-foot great white Folks, you'd have to use jaws for bait to catch a Carcharodon megalodon. I think things were a little bigger before the flood. Much bigger, actually. Carl Baugh in Texas is raising piranha in a pressurized chamber with increased electromagnetic field, trying to simulate pre-flood conditions. His fish are getting four times the size of normal. Call him up or go, go visit his place in Glen Rose, Texas. If you're ever driving across Texas, you might as well stop because there's nothing else to see as you drive across Texas. Turtles got to be huge. That's a big turtle uh, on the left. <laughs> Oyster shells were found in the top of the mountains in Peru, two miles above sea level. So many oyster shells were 11 and a half feet wide. 500 petrified oysters. You should see the pearls. Now, did you know petrified clams in the closed position are found all over the world. I've got one here on the table. These kind are found on top of Mount Everest. I would like to point out, Your Honor, Mount Everest is a little ways from the beach. 
Secondly, clams do not climb mountains very well. <laughs> Thirdly, when a clam dies, it opens. You can walk along the beach and find a million seashells. You hardly ever find a matched pair. The only way to get one closed and petrified would be to have him buried alive. Now, I don't think the water was over Mount Everest. I think Mount Everest was under the water. Big difference. Psalm 104 says, During the last part of the flood, the mountains arose, the valley sank down, the water rushed off. We cover more on that on video 6. You know, fossilized birds have been found 13 feet tall. How would you like to have that for Thanksgiving dinner? <laughs> and lizards got huge. Did you know reptiles grow all their life? They never stop growing. I think before the flood, when people lived to be 900, the reptiles would get to be really big. Really big. I think dinosaurs were big lizards that lived with Adam and Eve. The word dinosaur means terrible lizard. And that would be a terrible lizard if it's about 80 feet long. You can buy these at the pet store today. It's called a Jackson Chameleon. Got three horns on his face. I bet something similar to that. If you let it live 900 years, it'd get to be a Triceratops. Hmm? And I don't think today's lizards would grow to be dinosaurs if you let them live long enough. I think there's been any more than, you know, you could take all the chihuahuas today and crossbreed them and end up with a Great Dane. You know, I think it's just the genes for largeness are gone for whatever reason. But I think they're certainly in the same family of animals. Dinosaur means terrible lizard. Dinosaur and human bones have been found together in Peru, in South uh, America, several different places, and in South Carolina, and in Texas, and in uh, Brazil, and in Russia. Human hands and dinosaur bones found in the same rock strata. Dinosaur and mammal remains found together, according to New Scientist magazine, February of 2001. The Ica stones in Peru show humans and dinosaurs together. We've got pictures right here. If you want to get some of the articles about the Ica stones, or go to our website, drdino.com. There's quite a bit of information about the Ica stones. There are about 20 of those in America. Now we've got three of them in our museum, three of the actual Ica stones. They're real expensive to get out of the country down there in Peru. But a rich guy bought three of them, donated them to our museum. Said, yay, we'll take them. In Glen Rose, Texas, south of Dallas, that's where Dr. Ball's museum is, south of Fort Worth, they've got a river running through town called the Paluxy River. Back in 1908, the river flooded, and it got so bad, it ripped off the bottom of the river, which was solid limestone, sort of like concrete almost. It ripped off a two-foot layer of limestone and moved it 20 miles downstream. Underneath was another layer of limestone, so it's no big deal. But that layer underneath had contained hundreds of dinosaur footprints. They actually made a state park out of it. I've got the book right here, Dinosaur Valley State Park. If you want to come take a look at some of the pictures. They chiseled out lots of the tracks because they knew erosion would tear them up over the next, you know, 20, 30 years, would destroy them. They moved a lot of the tracks to museums. They cut out big blocks of stone and moved them and set them up under dinosaur skeletons. So it looks like the dinosaur just walked there. Some of the tracks are pretty big. Here's a kid taking a bath in one. Right next to the dinosaur tracks, frequently they found human footprints. Roland Bird was in charge of the group of guys digging out the tracks, and he reported there were 15 to 20 inch long, clearly defined human footprints with the dinosaur tracks. Hmm. Human tracks and dinosaur tracks together? On hundreds of dinosaur track sites have been found around the world. Finding dinosaur tracks is not that unusual. Many have been found. There's some in Holyoke, Massachusetts, some in Connecticut. They found Colorado on Red Rock Amphitheater. has got a bunch of dinosaur tracks. But to find human tracks with them is pretty unusual. In 1884, a geologist named Flint was working for the Peabody Museum in Harvard University. Down in Nicaragua, he discovered a layer containing fossilized human tracks 16 to 24 feet below the surface. He, defined, he described the tracks in 1884 and said these footprints are from one-half to three inches in depth and none exceeded 18 inches.